Thank you, Alana. Today was not a good day to play baseball. However, the season is once again upon us. As we celebrate our 75th year as Utah's first TV station, we remember 75 years of sports reporting. Back in the 1940s, Utah baseball met a number of local teams. In addition to the old Salt Lake Bees, there were semi-pro teams sponsored by the many minds of Utah. We know few love baseball as much as Craig Worth, so of course, he has the film and the story of one of the heroes of the old mining teams. Presenting the sports final, the latest news from the world of sports. Now here is Paul James. Let's take a look at scores. In the National League, only two games were scheduled. Gil Hodges hit a pinch double in the 10th inning, driving in Wally Moon. Their San Francisco Pittsburgh rained out. Those Our sports reports weren't just about what was happening in the major leagues. Oh, no, there was lots of local baseball to report. Well, back when our TV station went on the air, our sports department covered some amazing local baseball, the Utah Industrial Baseball League. Now there, mining companies would go out and hire ringers just to make the company team great. It went back years. The toughest teams came out of the mines. Every mining town had a team. Schofield, Eureka, Tooele, and they took it seriously 60 and 70 years ago. Some of the most hard-fought games were here in Magna. The home field for the Magna Garfield Smelter. Virtually all the greats are gone. Those who remembered the hot summer nights in the dugout. One of the greatest of them all was a tough playing star named Denzel Hansi. A double by Hansi. Hansi paced Midvale's victorious onslaught. Hansi hits double and two singles. 35 years ago, the late Denzel Hansi told me they were rough and tumble games. Many times I've been knocked down, and about all you can do is get up and uh, start over again. Well, uh, you can bluff a lot of people, and a lot of these young kids, we would bluff them. And they accused me of throwing at the hitter. Well, sure, I threw at the hitter. They were throwing at me. <laughs> that's, that's the difference between the ball players then and today. Here you throw at a guy or pitch him tight or close, and he wants to come out there and, and get you off of the mound, punch you out. Uh, there are a bunch of bloomer buttons as far as I'm concerned. Oh, they weren't bloomer buttons back then. Hansi was playing for the Idaho Falls Spuds when Garfield needed another pro. They hired him at the smelter, but made it clear that baseball was his job. On game time, we were allowed to get off about three or four hours early and go to the ballpark and there we got ready to play ball. Those other teams were just as serious. Only the best took their places on this field. They had some quality ball players. As one of the fellows was an ex-major leaguer by the name of Perry. I don't recall his first name now, but he was a great pitcher. And every time I played against him, I hit him like I owned the guy. The crowds were just as passionate about this all. It was more than just entertainment in the company town. Ballpark would be packed with them, maybe 1,000 to 1,500 people. The days of the great games. We have lost some of their names. Even some of the companies are no longer around. But memories, they're all here at the community ballpark. Yes, it was passion down to one's ball mitt. It took me two years to break that thing in. I took it apart and I put it back together and I used a bat and I pounded a, a pocket in it. And I used a lot of oil in it. I even soaked it in water to get the thing where it was flexible. They were here to play ball. Well, as Denzel Hansi once said, baseball, it's not for bloomer buttons. Well, it certainly is not. Craig Worth, ABC 4 News.
Wow, that good was stuff. quite a look back right good there. Good stuff right there, yeah. You don't uh, just dry out your own graphics anymore like Paul James no. used to? No, put them on cardboard and hold them up. <laughs> That's awesome. Good stuff. All right, uh, 